whenever I talk to clients and I ask them, you know, what is what is your enterprise imaging strategy? I yeah. always get, you know, a million different responses. And I, I think it's because everybody has a different idea of what enterprise imaging is. Yep. You know, yep. how, how would you define enterprise imaging? That's a tough question because you ask 10 different people, you're going to get 10 different answers. Um, I will tell you that Him Sim has done a very good job of writing white papers on enterprise imaging and they've defined it very well. For me personally, it comes down to the deliverable to the end user. So I understand that there's technology behind enterprise imaging in the form of like VNA services and diagnostic pack services for radiology and cardiology. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm most interested in uh, the view and therefore the viewer. How does yeah. it affect the hundreds and thousands of users who are looking to see that that longitudinal view of the patient's imaging record? And they want to see that imaging record from across different departments and service lines and locations uh -huh. because the patient condition nowadays crosses so many different imaging boundaries that they're really looking for one place to see that. And that's really the enterprise viewer. So when I think of uh, enterprise imaging, I gravitate more towards the actual viewer end of things. Okay. Well, th that's funny because a, a lot of clients are are entertaining the idea of a true enterprise viewer. Yeah. And what they tell me when they start, you know, to start to do a little research into it, but there's just, you know, a bewildering number of you know vendors and, and yep. options. And it's really hard to understand, you know, what they're really looking at. Um, if, if you were a hospital or a health system and you were looking for an enterprise viewer, you know, what are some of the key characteristics that you would consider? Yeah, I'd probably break it into two halves, I suppose. One would be a technical half and the other would be a user half. Mm -hmm. From the technical perspective, I would say, first and foremost, it really has to be HTML5. Um, using an app while possible, and it can be done, is a bit of a challenge because you have to download the app, you have to install the app, you have to update the app, and, and it mm -hmm. launches differently and everything else. So. I think first and foremost, it has to be HTML5. It has to be web-based because it gives you the most flexibility, which kind of ties into the second technical point, which I guess would be what's the integration capability. It has to be flexible. It has to be powerful. It has to be seamless. So uh, between you know HTML5 and the integration capability, those are probably the two most important technical aspects of it. Uh -huh. From the user perspective, there's probably two angles in there as well. Number one, it has to be intuitive because you are dealing with hundreds and thousands of users. Yep. So the intuitive nature of the viewer is paramount. Uh, it has to be easy to use and, and easy to navigate because you don't want to try to roll out training services for that many people <laughs> in depth. Right. That would be a real challenge. The second part of it is probably, while it has to be intuitive, it still has to be powerful, meaning mm -hmm. there are groups of users, orthopedic surgeons, vascular surgeons, who need advanced functionality, measurement capability, MIP, MPR, 3D, those sorts. So yeah. them using those groups using an enterprise viewer, it needs to be intuitive, but it needs to have the power and the tool set and the functionality that those high end groups really start to demand. So okay. that's kind of the two angles. Okay. Well, yeah. so let me let's go back to I, I know you mentioned integration. I want to talk about EMR integrations in, in yeah. particular. So you know, health systems they spend you know tens or hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> on their yeah. on their EMR. Oh yeah. And they they want their providers to to use it. They want them to to, to live in it and 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 use it. Um, tell me about how I mean how how can a enterprise viewer be integrated with an EMR? Yeah, if I was to describe it in a world, word, it would be seamless. It really has to be seamless. Launching another window or launching an app and then doing another search for the patient and then discovering the results and all these mouse clicks, that's not really the best way. Our customers tell us they're interested in seeing automated results immediately inside the EMR. That's what they're looking for. So um, hold on one second. Actually, I'm just going to share my screen for a second and actually show no, you be great. kind of what it, what it can look like. Uh, you should be able to see my screen now. Yes. Um, so this is a mock-up of an EMR, an EHR, a patient portal, a physician portal, whatever system you want. Because again, our viewer is HTML5. It has that really flexible integration capability, meaning you can embed it in an iframe inside of almost anything. As long as that system can oh. call us by a URL call, we will respond. So it's kind of that seamless look. And here the user really has no idea where our viewer starts and where it stops. Uh, we can make it look any way you want, that sort of thing. And that's really what the users are interested in. They'll just think, hey, now my EHR has a viewer inside of it. I can display images and that's great. Yeah. 
So this is that timeline view of the patient's imaging record from across different departments, whether it's clinical photography, ophthalmology, uh, radiology, cardiology, ECG, all these different areas. And that's because the users and their patients, they cross imaging boundaries. So they want to be able to see images that are literally coming from different departments, but they want to see it in one single view. And yeah. that's really the key. When we talk about EMR integration, it's got to be seamless. It's got to be fast, has to be intuitive, very easy to navigate as far as what you want to do and navigate across different types of exams. It really has to be that easy. That's where the success lies with an enterprise viewer. Okay, so I, I've got a question. You know, yeah. what I see here are, and you showed some examples of, you know, radiology images with cardiology images with yep. white light images. You know, all sorts yeah. of things, which is great. You know, ECG strip. I mean, that's great within this timeline. It's it's really yeah. compelling. As far as getting images into the timeline, do, does this mean that you need like? a VNA or, or a XTS registry, so a centralized place where all these images yeah, are located? Yeah. That's a fair question because it's probably one of the most under misunderstood uh, aspects of enterprise imaging, in my opinion. You don't have to have a VNA to get that timeline view. Hmm. Uh, a VNA is a critical part of your overall enterprise imaging strategy. We all agree on that, just like radiology packs and cardiology packs is. But you do not have to have a VNA in order to build that timeline view. The caveat to that is your viewer, in addition to being HTML5 and all the integration capability and all that stuff, needs to also support federation. So federation is where the single web viewer can actually reach out to multiple backend systems uh -huh. and actually query them and pull information from them simultaneously. So it builds oh. that longitudinal view for you. Okay. Um, hold on, I'm gonna share my screen again if that's okay, just because sure, sure. Um, I have, a slide that I was actually working on um, that kind of explains it, and that's that's what this is here. So when we talk about uh, federation, we call it the zero exchange network. So that's our viewer, and what it has, it again has that federation capability where the clinician in this example, she really doesn't care where these images reside, where they live. Are they in a PAX or a VNA? Are they in an AGFA system or third party? Are they local or are they remote? She doesn't know, she doesn't care, and that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Our Zero viewer with the federation capability has the, the smarts, if you will, to be able to reach out to these backend systems simultaneously and build that imaging timeline for her without the need for a VNA. So that oh. when she then says, ah, you know what? These two exams are two exams that I want to view. They can be coming very often from different systems in the back end. She has no idea. She doesn't need to know. It really doesn't matter. So you don't need a VNA to get that longitudinal view of the patient's imaging record. You can do it using Federation alongside your viewer. Wow. I mean, so yeah. that I mean, so I mean, that timeline view obviously has a lot of value. And being mm -hmm. able to provide that without having to worry about you know, migrations, a, a, a yeah. VNA. I mean, that's that's a lot of bang for the buck right there. Oh, absolutely. It is arguably one of the highest value areas, again, because you're dealing not with dozens of users, but you're dealing with hundreds and thousands yeah. of users. Yeah. Wow, that is cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. so listen, I'm going to I'm gonna change, uh, change gears here real quick. Um, okay. Another thing that clients always talk about, you know, patient care cycle, now it spans you know, not only different departments within the hospital, yes. but, you know, also different locations within a health system mm -hmm. and even cool. sometimes, you know, external health systems as well. And yes. so in order to, you know, keep that uh, patient care cycle, you know, consistent from an imaging standpoint, I mean, collaboration is a huge deal. Do, oh, yeah. do, do viewers, do they have any, you know, inherent collaboration capabilities? Uh, collaboration is critically important. I can't speak to all viewers on the market. I know ours certainly does, and it supports it um, in kind of a standard way, if you will, with mm -hmm. instant messaging capabilities. So two users can start to instant message um, yeah. and consult on an exam in that regard. And then one of the users who kind of needs the opinion of the second can then actually share a link that will uh, bring that other user onto the same exam that the first user is looking at, and they can actually kind of screen share, kind of like we're doing now in Teams and, and yeah. The, major platforms, those sorts of things. So that is one aspect of collaboration. We do that all the time. That's kind of a standard functionality as far as we're concerned. 
Uh-huh. The nice thing, though, is we're kind of taking that to the next level because we have customers now, especially in this pandemic era, where so much more collaboration and consultation needs to happen virtually. So um, right, we actually just built some content on this. So bear with me for one second. I'm going to share my screen one more time. Okay. Last time, I swear. Okay. No, this is good. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is an example of uh, our customer over in the UK. Uh, who has Microsoft Teams, as a lot of our customers do, and we happen to use it here at Agfa as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, what they're interested in doing is trying to enhance the collaboration capability within their health system, um, leveraging Zero and leveraging Microsoft Teams. So what we've done actually is we built a, a tool, an integration uh, inside of Zero. So we put in a little extra icon here, and that mm-hmm. when they click, when the authorized user clicks on that button, it allows them to share that study to a COVID channel. So they built a team of specialists specific to COVID. Uh, in this particular example, it could be epidemiologists, could be radiologists, cardiologists, all sorts of specialties belong to this team. And then they can post content to that team so that they can either live dynamically discuss the exam and talk about how to treat the patient and what's going on. Or if some of the participants aren't available at that moment, they can participate later and add their comments in and that sort of thing. So it's a very huh. um, very good way of not only sharing content to a specific group or team, but also being able to dynamically interact. If again, some of the users aren't immediately available, they can do it asynchronously, if you will, after the fact, uh, yeah. but it, it's a great tool from, from that perspective. And so, that's, so for example. This, yeah. this is new, this is, this is great because, you know, the, the collaboration tools that are native you know, to our viewer, they're great, um, but you have to be online in order to, yeah. to do it. And so that that's where I think the big advantage of this Teams integration sure. is, is because, yeah. you know, you and I, we work on Teams, you know, all the time. And yep. if on my on my phone, if someone needs to, you know, sends me a message or wants to wants to collaborate, I get a little, you know, message, you know, a little I'm, notification. I'm the same thing, you know, yeah. my phone, I've got the Teams right there and I can see immediately, regardless of where I am, don't have to be at my laptop or at my workstation or anything like that. It can follow me, which means it gives me the choice to say, hey, do you want to see what people are asking you about? Yeah. And do you then want to join right then and there or can it wait? So yep. it gives you the flexibility from that perspective. And that's great, not just for COVID, but there are other applications. There's multidisciplinary teams that mm-hmm. go on all day, every day within health systems. There's tumor boards. There's yeah. all sorts yeah. of applications. So although this particular customer started to use it from a pandemic perspective, you can actually take that capability and build it out into other tools as well. Right. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, listen, Jason, this has been very informative. Um, I, I really appreciate your time. I know I've probably taken up too much of it anyway. So good. So but, good. Um, but yeah, thanks again. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. That sounds good. Thanks, Brad. All take right. care. Take it. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.